right, boys and girls, welcome to another video. Dane here at Johnny Guitars. Welcome to another awe-inspiring and uh, enlightening video. Actually, I'm going to try to invent something, but somebody else already invented it, so I'm going to try to take something that's already been invented for another purpose and see if I can make it work here. So you may or may not be familiar with a product that Stu Mac makes called the Fret Kisser. And I actually just took a neck that was laying here and moved it away because I didn't think I was going to use it. So what it is, is it is basically a fret rocker, which is behind my monitor here. Yep, let me grab that. Uh, fret rocker. This is a fret rocker. This doesn't happen to be a Steam Mac one. This is a neck check guitars product. Uh, but if you have uneven frets, you can cover th the length of three frets and you can rock like so. And if you have a high fret, it will tell you. But they have this thing called the kisser, fret kisser, which basically takes and puts a raised or a smooth spot here and a smooth spot here and then a diamond grit in the center, which is all on the same plane. So that as you move it back and forth, it actually brings the center fret lower down to the actual two frets on either side. Now, I'm thinking about doing something like that, or I'm going to try to do something like that with this stick. I have processed this piece of wood through the jointer, and I have a very flat side here. And as you can see, just like the fret rocker, it, it rocks here. Now, what this is, Hopefully you'll be able to see it. Yeah. I have some uh, drop fill here that I've been doing for the last week uh, of lacquer. Um, when I put the bushing in this guitar and I was just pressing it in over on my uh, fret press, my, um, excuse me, my drill press, uh, I got it, it went in slick as could be. And when it got right to the surface, it just popped the, uh, it popped the uh, lacquer off, and so I've been refilling, re-leveling uh, that lacquer. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of sandpaper in the center of this beam. And I'm going to say about that long. About that long. And... Determined by how wide. I'm going to work off the edge of the guitar here so that I'm not damaging it any more than I already have. Now this happens to be a uh, 400 grit sandpaper. Let's just move that a little bit. And I like this paper a lot. It's uh, if I can remember the brand. Kling, you know, it's not on here, but I'm thinking it's Kling Spore. Does that sound right? And um, I like the product, but it's very difficult to get the backing off of it. Um, so we'll... We'll just flash past this like it took no time at all. All right. And we're just going to put it as much in the center as we can. Looks close. It's a little off. Move it down a fuzz. All right, so there's that. So now what I'm going to do is, uh, so what we want to do is we want to end up elevating because um, instead of trying to recess, let me get back over here, instead of trying to recess the paper to be level with the wood, I'm going to do is I'm going to build the wood up level to the paper, which in essence will be Putting sandpaper, or putting, sand, putting masking tape on it. 
on it. Now I didn't I didn't measure the thickness of the sandpaper. I can do that. So it's 12 thousandths with the little clear piece on it, which is probably not even going to register. So 12 thousandths. These pieces are about 5 thousandths thick. Most masking tape is about 5 thousandths thick. This masking tape is 6 thousandths. So actually, that's perfect because that gives us 12 thousandths of masking tape and 12 thousandths of sandpaper. Let me measure this stacked up. Yeah, it's giving me 13 thousandths on both of these pieces together. So we have we have virtually the same, the same thickness on the masking tape as we do on the sandpaper. And you can see I still have a rock where the lacquer has been built up because um, there's a hump there. Okay, so and I did mention I have 400 on here, but 400 is probably not going to do what we wanted to do. It may. But, so here I am, um, essentially, once I, once this is all done, it should all be the exact same level. So, um, I'm not really going to do it because I don't want to test my theory. You should be able, well, you should be able to go anywhere on the guitar and only basically just lightly abrade the surface. See, there's... No rocking there, no rocking there. So it's all the same. I just feel like this is a lot safer way. I've, I've always, let me tell you what I've done in the past. So some people, Dan Earlywine is one of them, suggested ways of doing this and pinpointing your location. You can basically put your finger on top of that hump and then drag your paper. So you just isolating right where you want to do that. And you can do that. I just thought, that I would give this a shot and see what happens. And I think I'm going to be happy. So I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to, not going to film myself doing this entire process. Um, so I'm just going to pause it right here and you can see that or not. There's, yeah, already some some smoother. It may not be completely drop filled high enough yet. So, so what I'm doing is I'm taking it down the first time. I'll bring you back back in after I get it leveled out as far as it'll go. All right. So um, I literally spent maybe another minute with this stick. Let's call this the the fill kisser, F I L L kisser, like the fret kisser. Now, I wonder if I should produce a bunch of these sticks and uh, open a website to sell them on. I know there are people that are drilling holes in wood and selling them as fret sorters for when you do fret work and things like that and pin holders. And I, I'm, I'm sorry, I find that ridiculous. If you can build a guitar, you ought to be able to drill 22 holes in a piece of wood to hold your frets or 24, just in case you get wild. Anyway, Here's a, here's a little thing that uh, I think has actually worked out very, very well. Um, uh, as you may be able to see here, there's still uh, a little light shining. I, I blocked the light maybe. Yeah, you can see there are a couple divots there that still need to be filled. The rest of this is going to be leveled out and uh, then just go over everything like I did from the start with this lacquer. It's all the same product, um, so it will be... Um, yeah, 600 through 1200 or 1500 and then, uh, 3000 and then buffed up. And, uh, I, I, if you, well, I probably haven't per, uh, published those videos yet. I didn't want this to be completely shiny. It's got a, it's got a decent enough shine on it. I don't know if you can see that or not. Maybe we'll do this way. Yeah. You can see it's definitely got shine on it, but it's not a massively high gloss thing. All right. 
Yeah. All right. So that's that. And uh, yeah, we'll call that good for now. Nothing else I needed to say. Good. That's it. All right. Thanks for watching, folks. Take care. I hope this little uh, that little gizmo trick is going to help you out. This is the first time I've tried it. Just was pondering it the other day, and I thought, oh, that, that ought to work. And by golly, it did. All right. That's it. Bye now.